Welcome back, everyone. Uh, now it's the time to welcome our next speaker, Christian Moreira Fredes. So uh, Christian is a developer I and am. an astrophysicist. Hi, Christian. Where are you joining from? I am joining from Berlin. Nice. So Christian has previously uh, has worked on the Qt project and works at the Qt company. He's a developer and an astrophysicist, and today he's going to talk about internals of C Python. So I can't wait to listen to your talk. Uh, sounds really interesting. Over to you now, <laughs> and good luck. Cool. I will just set my timer now, just to control myself not going longer than expected. So thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Christian. Uh, uh, as, you, as you heard, I am currently writing code at the Qt company. One of the projects that I work with is the Qt for Python project, which is the official Python bindings. Maybe you heard the Pi side. So that's why I'm so close to C Python development. I need to deal with a lot of internals just to maybe uh, to be able to expose uh, Cute to Python users. So yeah, the, the talk is called Learn C Python by Breaking It, because it's usually the approach that I, I prefer to learn new things. Uh, I, I'm not really, I know that for some people, books works well. For me, I'm really lazy on that regard, so I prefer to just break stuff and learn why that uh, happened. I am really lucky that the previous two talks covered topics that I was really looking forward to cover in this talk too, but uh, I didn't, I couldn't because of the time constraints, of course. So I am really happy. Hopefully, you watch them. If not, I invite you to watch them afterwards. And so, yeah, thank you very much for the organization to putting this together. Hopefully, next year we will see each other in person. So let's start. So I know that uh, nowadays uh, the, fee uh, the fear of missing out is quite large among people related to uh, programming because we have new libraries, languages, and everything uh, popping up everywhere. Um, and this might be kind of tricky just to catch up. So I know that some of you will say, yeah, C Python internals. No, it's really not my thing. So in any case, I know it can be scary, but don't worry about it. So I put this picture here. Uh, I am not sure if maybe in the chat you can see if you recognize this thing. Uh, maybe when you were a kid, you kind of like got one of these things. So I put it here because when I was a kid, usually uh, I had a couple of those because that's what got you get when you break your maybe your uh, toy car and uh, you get there's this motor inside and then you can connect the battery with it and it spins and stuff like that. So uh, for me, it was really interesting since the early age. And uh, uh, this was kind of like my way of learning things since the beginning, like breaking something, trying to see how it works, and then it started to enjoy and do other things. So uh, of course, I would love to jump directly into uh, show you some code of uh, strange behavior. But uh, we need to take a look at a couple of things first, just to be sure and just for you to have all the necessary tools. Even though this talk is for intermediate uh, level, uh, I'd say that if you at the moment are listening or, or you are too afraid because you don't know C, it's totally fine. You can stay around. I usually put intermediate because when I say C language, some people get scared. And this will not be scary, I promise. So first of all, uh, CPython, maybe some of you thought, Man, then is this a typo or something? And I'm pretty sure if you watch the previous talk, you kind of know what is coming on the next slide. So here we have four, uh, sorry, six different terminals. Uh, I will give you a couple of seconds. So you can check them out, all out. Can you see what is the difference? Maybe you will see that uh, here we have like four symbols. Here we have five symbols. But the code itself is the same in all of those terminals. So if I go to the next slide, you will see that only the last one is the Python that we are more used to it, the, the Python that we know. So you have there um, MicroPython, PyPy, Jiton, which is the Java implementation, Rust, uh, Rust Python, Piston, and Python itself. So in previous talks, we already got like uh, we have different implementations of Python, right? As I said already, we have MicroPython, Rust, Python in Java, PyPy written in Python, and Piston. We have others like Stackless Python, R and Python, Pigeon. And CPython is the main one. So that's why usually we say when we are talking about Python in a more colloquial way, we usually refer to the interpreter that is defined by the CPython code. So what is the CPython code? Um, if you go to GitHub slash Python CPython, you will see there, there that you have um, the official repository, of course, that will have all the developments. So when you get it, you will get the latest and the greatest. 
Uh, but inside there are many directories. It took me some, some time to kind of understand what was going on there, but likely there are many good talks out there, tutorials and explanations that can, you, can give you uh, a glimpse of what is going on there. So this is overall the structure that I got before preparing the, the, um, the talk. You see a couple of directories there and a couple of files. But uh, if I may, I said that the most critical ones, so you can maybe look into it, are, the, of course, documentation, um, the all the interpretive header files, the grammar that maybe you saw since the last version, there was a nice improvement there, thanks to PEP 617. Then you have the standard library in pure Python, because, of course, some bits of Python are written in Python. Then you have the modules. There is a standard library in C. And then you have objects, which has all the built-in types. This is one of the most interesting things for me, at least, uh, because I was really curious to know how does Python list works, dictionary sets, and everything. Uh, of course, there is also a directory called Python that has all the C Python runtime. So you will see all the maybe there are the functions that are important if you want to try to build uh, things with C Python directly, like you saw on the previous talk. So if you want to build your own Python, of course, I'm saying that not install it with double click uh, or your package manager or whatever, just build your own things. You can easily do it uh, by cloning the repository, of course, first. Uh, then you can go uh, inside the directory and run the configure command. If you're not used to these things, don't worry about it. It's only this slide, but this is more like Unix focus on how things are being built. And then you do make, just to start compiling, then you can specify if you have a lot of processors there. And finally, you will have your Python interpreter. So you can see it there. As you see here, uh, it's the 3.11 because it's the alpha is what I got when I was building this thing. So yeah, we need C because we're talking about C Python. So I promise it will be super brief and super simple. So let's go step by step, side to side, things that you can have in Python and C. I know this may, it may be a silly example, but I just want you to, to give an example so you are not afraid of looking at these things. So let's go first, comments. You see different ways of writing it. Way of importing modules. In C, usually you include kind of headed files or kind of modules. You can define a function there. It's a simple function add with two parameters. Then you kind of have a main function in Python, but in C it's mandatory. You really need this main function there. So I was trying to write something roughly similar in Python. I know that some of you don't like to have this structure, but it doesn't matter. Then you have some types, right? You have first a string that in C is a little bit weird, an integer and a float. You can call your functions there and do a print. I don't like this way of printing in Python, but it's just to make you the analogous to what is C. Uh, so you will say at the moment, yeah, but I mean, that's really complicated. But is it? I mean, we, we saw today in the, the keynote how important and difficult types are the same thing. But if we add type here, type annotations, you see that the code itself, it can look more familiar to it. So it's nothing to, uh, to worry about it. I mean, I'm pretty sure that if you can understand the code on the left, you will be able to understand code like you see on the right. OK. But maybe you are saying like, yeah, but Python is way simpler. Forget about C. But is it Python always really simple? I mean, maybe on the chat you can see what does this code does. Maybe you don't know. I don't know. You can let me know afterwards in the in the breakout room. Or whether this code does for a given number. Yes, you see, it could be a little bit complicated. This is valid Python code. But anyway, so let's uh, bear with me. The most important thing, you learn C, or at least a little bit of it, so you will be able to understand other things. Now we want to start digging into and try to see if we can break some stuff there. So don't be afraid. It will be really cool to do it. And the first thing that I want to tell you is that sometimes we we kind of, I'm not saying that Python is a best project, but we believe of projects that we use that they are really super strict and things that work properly all the time and they have like no further or strange comments. So what I wanted to show you is that briefly, uh, if you go to the C Python code and we look for a couple of things inside the repository, you will see that uh, we also find nice things. So what if you find the word to do? You see, there is a lot of to do still in the, in the whole code. So you have things like, yeah, this does not run, things like that. So if you go there and maybe you look for uh, fix me, you will also so many things that, yeah, I don't know if this is working. Oh, this is not correct. Uh, see, this is wrong. 
And of course, you can go even further and try to look for sad face events that uh, people sometimes don't know or they don't know how to bypass a certain thing. So what I want to say here is not saying like, oh, look at how bad it is. No, it's like Python is a project like that, uh, like the ones we write. So don't be afraid of it. OK, so now we are going to see Python code, but uh, it, will, it will be brief, I promise you. Um, OK, so first of all, we'll use a tool. If you are in, in, in Linux, you can use GDB. Uh, you can, you are Mac, LDB, and in Windows, I really don't know. If you don't know what it is, thing, you can, be, you can think about it's like a crystal ball that does some crazy things to allow you to see through code. So one of the first things that I wanted to show you is that uh, if we do something like, uh, like this, for example, I told you already. Don't worry about this thing. That there is this always this main function. So we can even say, let's say, okay, let's break in main, and then let's write Python. And then it was something was fine. There. This is inside Python, as you see here. So we have an int main. So it's a similar thing that we saw, but there is another function there called by bytes main. Okay, let's break there and try to continue further. Uh, if we go there, we still see okay, there is another function there. Cool, but there is another thing there. By main main off. Oh, okay, so let's try to break there. Try to go there, and maybe we can see there is. And still, there are other main fun. Okay, so this method might work. Of course, you can break in different parts, but it's not really necessary at the moment. But with this tool, you can be able to go inside and see what is going on under the hood. I know this might be maybe uh, not too obvious, but uh, just bear with me that. This is something really useful at some point you would like to see and start to see where to break things. Another option, which is really interesting, is the, the, the nice uh, this module. So let's consider this is small, the same function that we have there. Maybe you have seen in many talks and when they run this on this, yet they get this weird thing is added. That's by code, it's totally fine. But something interesting there is that you see that you, you have two variables that somehow are load, and then there is this thing called binary add. Binary add. So then now maybe you can go back to your code and look for binary add. Binary add. We will check does this thing out and go here. There it is. As you can see, this is C code. Don't be scared. But this is quite simple since Python, of course, works with this kind of a stack. So you will get the two elements that you have there right and left, and then you will perform some sum. We we all learn now, for example, that first we check if there are a Unicode, so there are strings maybe. We'll do some special concatenations, because of course you know that string has two things. And here, there is a special function called by number add. So see, you already know, like if, for example, you want to alter the mechanism of the plus sign, you can do some things here, and you're going to start breaking this code apart. So it's really interesting. Another interesting thing here is that you see, uh, if you're familiar with uh, switch cases, this is doing things for different options. Uh, if you go up, we have the modulo there. If we leave it up, we have floor divide, and many other things there. So if we go to the line uh, 547, we see that this whole process is inside uh, something quite similar to a while true. So you can see this is running all the time, and there is there are errors, and we are evaluating code and stuff like that. All these mechanisms, which is inside a C eval C file, it belongs to something that is called the main loop. And uh, the main loop, I think that on this line, you will see uh, the evaluation of this frame, which is kind of the equivalent of like what you are trying to do there. I think that even if we look for main loop, yeah. So we have some, see, we have there where it is specified, where the main loop is located. So this is what is running, what Python is running, evaluating everything that we have there. OK. You saw many things that were PyObject. Before, in the talk before, I was really lucky that uh, um, uh, the previous speaker show uh, the interaction with PyOptics and stuff. But I just want to show you what this structure looks like in, in CPython. So this is a simple structure. Maybe if you're familiar with data classes, it's something you know that holds a couple of values. You can look at it as an enum, but it's not the same, but still. It's a kind of like something that holds a couple of values. Quite simple, right? So the thing is that uh, here you have something that's called optype. And when I, when I went inside, I said, OK, what is inside this optype? This is all the code that is inside optype. May, I'm pretty sure you're going to even read it. But the important thing here is there are many cases and situations and stuff regarding like what is going on with Python. Here, you can see there are many things specified for numbers, for sequences, for mappings, et cetera, et cetera. 
So maybe now you're thinking, okay, okay, whatever, I am really not sure for this, I quit. Uh, you don't need to learn them all. The thing is quite simple. If you need to implement a type that is, looks like an, an int, you implement the methods and the things that are required for ints. For lists, same things that are required for ints. And for strings, same thing. So uh, I just want you to, 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 to get your head around of a pi object as a big box that you can fill however you want, depending on your needs, OK? So uh, a couple of things that I was trying out for this talk is that uh, um, I first I would like to talk about, I will just open my Python interpreter here. So of course, I'm running Python 4, the Euro Python version. I hope that all of you are also using it. Um, with sets, the problem that I have is that uh, every time that I was trying to, OK, I just have a simple set here. And I was trying to add a new element. I hope that you can see right Yeah, <clears throat> We have it there. I was always trying to then to add another set. But this, of course, there is a problem because that's not in Hashable. So I never managed to remember what was the name of the function to include another set. So I really would love to have, I don't know, something, something like, I don't know, add another set. Uh, OK, sorry about it. Yes, I, I forgot that I need to, of course, be more gentle. Add another set, please. Yes, and that we have it. So we can do things like to, just for you to remember, even if the name is longer, I mean, uh, it works for me, right? I cannot remember what was the thing. If you are wondering what was the name of the function, it's called update. Never came to my mind. I'm really sorry about it. So this is something that bothers me about the thread. But just you can see, you can, you can break some stuff there and fix it. So, Something else that is also quite interesting is our lists. That of course uh, there are many modules inside. Sorry, methods inside the list. We can see a couple of them, and I am pretty sure that some of you you don't know it. So let's create now a list. Again, quite simple list. Uh, let's say that we want to append a new number. So you know, I want to append number three. You have it there. How do you prepend an element? We don't have the prepend method, right? Because if I do uh, prepend or something, so maybe some of you in the chat would be saying, OK, you do the insert. But maybe you can do also the same with writing the word append backwards. But then if you do that, then you can, of course, start your, your number there. But I don't know, maybe. It maybe it's useful. Maybe we can submit a patch about it. There is a, something else that list has that uh, list has be, can behave like list, uh, like, sorry, less stacks. So you have something that is called pop. Right? So you see that with this, you remove and return the night and blah, 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 blah. So if I do now a pop, the list kind of uh, change, right? So, but I don't know about you, but I'm not really about a lot of uh, pop. So I prefer to use rock. So if you try to help the, the help of this, it's kind of similar, but they say that, of course, it's, it's rocking. So at least maybe I can try to rock. And then, of course, I am rocking out uh, the, the number two. And then, of course, it maybe that's not uh, your cup of tea, and then you want to other things that uh, you want. You maybe want to I don't know salsa out the list. If you do some salsa, this salsa the list in a salsa steps order and return none. So maybe see if this is my list and I do salsa, you can have I don't know some salsa mix there. In it. But yes, these are things that are kind of like nice that you can have in there. So let's try to create another list uh, and another example. So let's say that if we want to work with colors, right? Uh, maybe we want to do like uh, something with uh, red, or we want to do something with uh, the color. Oh, sorry, my camera. I think that is what? Uh, I'm sorry about it. I was not. Uh... OK, I really don't know what to do. Help. OK, let's forget about this example then. I think that is, is, is too strange to, to have these kind of things. Uh, uh, OK, so uh, then, of course, that's one of the things that you can maybe play around with the silly things that, uh, with the list. Something else that we can kind of look at, we have a couple of minutes still, we have seven minutes, is that things that in the future you, you, you can come and uh, kind of can count on it. So uh, there are many things that have been discussing already uh, with uh, the conference, which are the next things that are coming in, in Python, right? Something else that I found interesting is that, uh, well, Pablo was talking about, you know, this really useful way of um, implementing, I mean, the, this PEP 657, uh, how to get you to 
point directly where the or the problems are, right? And I noticed that the community that on another side of the spectrum is is uh, using a lot of our tool for Visual Studio Code. I don't use it, but I have seen that a lot of people really like Visual Studio Code bits. So I was thinking, hmm, what if we kind of mix these ideas? So I was thinking, what if, uh, if you know, I mean, you know that you have a bad list. This is kind of the examples that people is showing that maybe we can do something crazy on that. I don't know, uh, call, trying to call this thing and maybe we can revive our friend Clippy and then we can make it, I don't know, more like a pet related to it. If you don't like Clippy, you maybe have some past from us and uh, maybe you want to do something different. And when we are doing Python and you have some, I don't know, some weird error, maybe you want to have something more friendly, like, uh, I don't know, maybe a little cow that, uh, you know, is kind of telling you like uh, when it's going, what is going on there. So you can kind of mix these two ideas, right? So yeah, this is zero division error, but, uh, but do you know what happened when we, Type zero divided by zero in Python, well, at least in the newest version. I think that is quite of a tricky thing here going on, but uh, yeah, I think that let's let's not go there. I think that is too scary to 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 work with. Let's go back to this. So yeah, since we are finishing uh, now, uh, I was noticing a lot of people that uh, they were struggling a little bit with. Um, uh, all the backgrounds of the frame VR, there were some discussions and some material, at least from the speaker. But did you know that Python was uh, conference ready, at least in the newest versions? Well, if you go here and you try to, for example, to write uh, help with the Euro Python, uh, you see that with this at least option, you can prepare your webcam for a Euro Python conference. So I really don't know um, if we can try to do it. Euro Python. But yeah, as you can see now from Python, we can control our camera feed and everything. As you can see down here that, of course, there is the EuroPython logo and also my nickname. So yeah, that, that will be the main things. And maybe you thought already like, yeah, there are many details. This is really not for me. Um, there are other stuff here that are really important, like Lee was discussing in the previous talk. The first one is the reference counting thing. This is how Py objects of the uh, lips in Python. It's usually kind of a, uh, the, a simple idea, right? Every time you use something, you increase a counter. And when this counter reaches zero, then that object, it does stop. Um, stop living there in the Python, so that's why it gets garbage collected. It's a really interesting topic, but it really requires you to have a full talk or maybe a couple of workshops. Something also really interesting that you see many people talking about the global interpreted lock. And then it's also it's really interesting for you to go there and try to learn by yourselves. And something else that also is likely for us, it was addressed in the previous talk, is the module on type creation. Uh, even though um, it's, uh, dealing with all these pi objects things might be a little bit tricky, I really encourage you to start now to clone the repository, start to modify the like, couple of things that I already told you and maybe you can start to, to check it out. So as I said, don't worry about it. You can go slowly and also embrace the Python. It's nothing too serious. Uh, it's something that you can still copy and paste here, there. Uh, all the little jokes that, of course, I was sharing during this talk, I will share them uh, later on. Make sure that maybe to, to, to follow me on Twitter or on GitHub, I will be posting this all the material so you can replicate all the silly things that I was doing today uh, at your own pace. So yeah, I think that that would be it. I think I will still have a couple of minutes that they have friend. I am not sure if uh, we have some questions already that maybe we can invest this time to. If not, we can also kind of like look into the things that I was, the, the implementation of the code that I was showing up. Yeah. It was it was really mind blowing. Uh, one word to describe this talk is brilliant. You 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 fall for me, huh? You you sent me a message saying that my camera was working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, uh, right. So we have a few questions. I'll read them out. Sure. For you. Uh, first thing, uh, everyone is talking about what what was it with Python four? Um, of course, as I said, I mean there were many jokes here. Mm -hmm. This is just the dev branch that I just manually changed. You will see it later on when I share the repository. Is you can change one variable and then you can get, of course, whatever branches you have there. As you see here, it's even the the Euro Python uh, version, right? So you see it there. Uh, well, my, my screen is not, but you can see Euro Python version. So this is this okay. was a silly joke. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, uh, what's the average compile time on a normal machine? Is it minutes? Is it hours or something else? 
Well, uh, let's try it out. So uh, let's create a new build. I will uh, build. Uh, I will go uh, to the C Python code that I have. I will just run configure here. Um, this is just configuring. And then, I, of course, for the compilation process, I think that it will be maybe less than a minute, but uh, I have a uh, Ryzen 5, so I have 10 CPU cores there. This is not taking too much time. There it is. So if we try to build now, it shouldn't take a lot of time, but we still have, we are even inside 25 minutes. So I think that people will be fine to, to just wait. In the meantime, I can show you, like uh, I have, uh, yeah, 12 uh, processors to build this thing. And I think that will be it because this is the last thing and it's just running the config and yeah. So let's say that it will be like two minutes, maybe at least on this machine. Of course, I know I had the, uh, in my old laptops and stuff that uh, it takes a lot of time, but here it shouldn't be much. We can leave running this thing. Ah, there it is. So see, like kind of like one minute, less than two minutes. Okay, nice. Uh, we have another question, which is kind of interesting one. So did you also go under the hood for other Python interpreters like Rust Python or Rad and Python? Uh, can you tell? No, not really. I have, yeah, you, I mean, yeah. I have been, I wanted to, to contribute at some point to, to Rust Python because I, when it started, I thought it was really cool, but I didn't know Rust at the moment and learning a new language, it was the same kind of issue that I was mentioning at the beginning of my talk. Uh, the mm -hmm. only thing that I have some, um, Brief knowledge is that stackless Python, which is something that uh, maybe not many people know, but they can remove the whole concept of a stack in Python. So all these things that you see pops and stuff, uh, mm -hmm. it's really interesting project. I have the uh, luck to to work with the author in the past. So yeah, but I nice. said that C Python is is quite the simplest one. Do there are other much maybe this is something a good opportunity. There are other projects. Maybe you can check the Python US notes from the conference. Uh, there is something mm -hmm. called HPY. People can look maybe and, and see other implementations. Okay. Nice. I hope that answers the question. So yeah, uh, really, we enjoy it a lot. Uh, and I still see people posting questions around. So if anybody has any more questions, please feel free to jump on to the breakout room. Yeah, uh, or they can reach out. I mean, I am C yeah. Mao Ray on Twitter. You can write me whatever. And I will maybe now go to the to the breakout room and maybe people want to uh, shoot more questions. Just, just the last question I'll just mm -hmm. show. I just got one. So if you are playing around with it, uh, you'll need to recompile for every update you make to the code, or yeah, so you could yeah, test the changes. Only, it's only a little thing. So let's say if we do something like uh, this, will take less than a minute, I promise. Uh, if you go to C Python object list object, and um, for example, here is uh, all the silly things that I was doing with OBS during the talk. So maybe we can remove the the fake append. Um, method that you saw there, so be me PA. I can remove it from here. Um, so I think that it should work, but in any case, so you can see there, it only build that data. So it's only what I touch. Of course, if you you modify the object, which is the main thing from Python, you will need to modify, build other things, but as you saw, it's, it's quite simple. Right. Okay, uh, well, I, I suppose, uh, there are no more questions yet, so let's, mm -hmm. let's wrap it. So really, it was a pleasure listening to you. And um, yeah, thanks once again. Thank you very much for the organization and the effort. Bye. Bye. OK, uh, so uh, I have two announcements to make. Uh, so Lightning Talks are going to start in 10 minutes from now in the Optiva track, so please stay tuned. And also a gentle reminder for all of you, uh, the sprints are starting tomorrow and there is still a chance uh, for you to find more developers and collaborators for your open source project and also to educate people about them. So please feel free to register and list your project on the sprints registration page. The link has been already shared on the metrics channel. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Goodbye. <laughs>